If you are looking into buying cheap and safe FIFA coins, look no further than footcoinshop.net. They have the fastest service, an incredible loyalty reward system, and the best prices around. Use my creator code INCEPTION when you sign up for your account and get a 5% discount with your order. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today we have a settings video to do. Uh, for those of you that are new to the game, uh, the settings is going to be over here on the top left corner of your screen, right? So with your D-pad or the left stick, press left, and you'll just go to settings right away, okay? Uh, settings, game settings, and then we're going to go into all of the presets. So guys, when you start off with your controller settings, just set it up on competitive because competitive is what you guys are going to be playing on when it comes down to the online experience, which you can see here, the competitive preset is always enabled in online competitive matches. The following settings are affected by the competitive preset, which is all going to be stuff that we're going to be talking about, okay? So you can see by default, they have auto shots off, assisted headers off. So headers are still manual. So just be very mindful of that when you go for them, okay? So shot assistance, uh, I still keep it on assisted. I may switch to precision depending on the situation, but I'm very used to assisted, which is why I never really switched to it. Uh, precision is the, I believe, the new thing this year where the shot direction will be partially assisted, aiming at the goal results in more accurate shots and faster ball speeds, right? So this is not a uh, make sure you do it on assisted only. This is going to be dependent on the meta of the game when it comes to shooting, right? For me, I think right now assisted is perfectly fine. I'm very used to it. And for the most part, it does help out. Uh, now, there is one shooting animation that you cannot control as far as I'm concerned right now. Maybe you could, maybe you couldn't, but I'm pretty sure you can't. Where if you just do a regular power strike, your player will sometimes do a side footed shot, which I don't agree with this animation decision because it's not like a like a contextual thing it's just a thing that ea does because even last year they did sometimes side footed shots as well and it was one of the things that i mentioned in the rant video where that should be a selective shot because you want to lace it lacing it will take a specific strike and then side foot it will also take a specific strike but it's it's not possible for you to like pick which one you want to do right so just be mindful because that shot can happen very consistently okay so when you take your strikes just be mindful of that uh, but yeah, shot assistance on assisted, time finishing on on. If you guys have a way of making the shot specifically laced and specifically side footed, let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's a way right now. Uh, you can see that auto flare pass is off through pass assistance. A lot of these settings that you guys are going to see here is the same thing I had last year. But I did change one thing uh, that we're going to be talking about. Okay. So through pass assistance, uh, semi, you know, through pass direction will be less assisted. It will rely more on your aim. Pass power will still be partially assisted. Honestly, guys, if you kept this on assisted as well, or you kept this on manual, depending on the person, it's not terrible. But for me, I think get, having a little bit of an assistance on it, it just makes more sense. Okay. Uh, Lob through pass, semi on that as well. I always like to use semi uh, for that one specifically. Ground pass assistance also going to be on uh assisted i think it works perfectly fine for me you can rock with a semi and stuff but i think assisted is fine for the way that i generally build up the play cross assistance on semi as well the reason why i like semi and i don't like assisted is because i notice this a lot i don't like crossing the ball and the game choosing which general area it's going to cross the ball to, right? When you use a semi, you can see here that the effectiveness of the cross will depend more on where you aim and how long you hold it. So if you hold it for a short period of time, it will go to the guy closest to you. Middle period of time, it'll go in the middle, and then the higher one will go to the top. So I like semi because it's more consistent for where I specifically want to pass the ball. And if you have players that have a play style where they're very good at crossing the ball. I'm pretty sure Alexander Arnold has really good play styles. That's going to be a really big variable to work with. Um, okay. I think lob pass assistance. I think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure in last year's game, I had it on semi. Okay. I've switched it to assisted in this game because lob passes is a very effective way of scoring a goal. If you have a player that has a really good passing capabilities, sometimes they don't even have to have good passing capabilities. Law passes a very big way of scoring a goal if the defense is set up a certain way, because obviously if people are parking the bus, which is like the default tactic this year again, uh, then you have to kind of work with the law pass a certain way. But it's very, very effective, which is why I personally switched it to assisted pass receiver lock. This will be completely personal preference based. Some people like the early one. 
um, which is the animation start. But you can see that they have like different options now, like power up, the power receiver is locked as soon as the pass button is released, um, or the power bar reaches full power. For me, I'm okay with late. I always like to make a last second decision because sometimes I'll make a pass and I my mind switches to something else because that person is being blocked. So I want to be able to switch right away, right? So it works out well for me. Uh, precision pass sensitivity. You could put this on high or normal. Honestly, it's going to be personal preference as well. Uh, adjust the speed of precision aim at a high sensitivity. The aim will always match your um, left stick angle input, making it more responsive, yet more challenging to aim precisely. Uh, you can get used to this, right? Um, at some point, you could switch to a high, but I think normal is going to be the best bet for most of the people that end up playing the game. Uh, auto clearances are set to off. Clearance assistance, I've always personally liked directional. I don't like when it's on classic because classic is basically... You know, if you go for a clearance, which if you're going if you're going for a defensive play where you're trying to clear out the ball from a header, you should hold circle or B. People still don't know this. Never pass out from inside the 18 yard box, because when you hold circle or B, they jump higher and they're more physical to win those engagements. OK, so for me, when I have it on directional, I can choose exactly where I want to clear the ball now. Be very mindful of this. There are actually situations where it makes sense for you to clear the ball out for a corner kick or for you to clear the ball out, not necessarily always to the side, right? Because a lot of people, when they go for directional, they always do it back into the middle of the pitch. It's not always the best option, guys. Sometimes you have to take a look at where your player's body is angled defensively so that it makes more sense for him to win that engagement, okay? Because remember, when it comes to the clearance assistance, attacker advantage on crosses is a really big thing okay sometimes like you think oh i got this ball easily and then the attacker comes out of nowhere okay so be mindful of that when it comes to using the body and manual goalkeeping depending on how the attacker looks like he's gonna attack right so yeah uh jockey system manual is on by it's just manual by default so you can't do anything about that uh defending so defending is the interesting one that i wanted to talk about okay so there's new ones and then there's the old one right so I noticed that when I was defending this game, something felt a little bit weird, right? And it felt weird to me because it was initially on advanced defending. Now, this will be a very 50-50 situation as well because it will entirely depend on what you want because this new setting is actually pretty decent, okay? Because in this new setting, advanced defending gives you the freedom to choose your tackle type. Press circle to attempt a standing tackle and press X to attempt a shoulder challenge or seal out. Do you guys remember when I used to do tutorials in last year's game or not tutorials, but like just defensive reviews where I used to tell you guys, guys, there is literally a hidden mechanic in the game where when you press circle and you like feel it out, right? Your player will go for a shoulder barge. It's not specifically a command like it is in this year's game. We talked about this before this game, uh, before this game came out. In this game now, they have specific commands for it, right? So they have the press X for you to shoulder barge, right? And then they have the circle for you to do the standing tackle. So because I am personally used to the tac uh, tactical defending of me knowing, uh, for the most part, when to press circle or B so that he kind of goes for the shoulder barge or he goes for the tackle, I like it personally on the tactical. So that's why it felt weird, right? Because I'm like, why is he not doing the shoulder barge in certain situations? And, you know, it, like I sometimes would do a tackle and he would tackle the air and I'm like, ah, so they removed that. But then I went back to this and I'm like, oh, but tactical defending is still a thing, right? So it will contextually choose. So contextually choose means what it was before. So just be mindful of that. Uh, this advanced defending feature that EA added is a great addition to the game. To be honest, it's really cool that you can basically decide between the two. Uh, for the most part, it's actually a really cool feature, but I'm just used to the tactical defending because I, I feel like I can time the shoulder barge really well for the most part. But if I feel like at some point the responsiveness of it gets annoying, then I could switch to advanced depending on the situation, right? Pass block assistance, I think it always makes sense to put that on. Auto switching, guys, listen to me, okay? This one was driving me crazy and I've watched, I've watched highlights on Twitch before I even got the game. I'm like, oh my goodness, why do these guys not respond to the loose balls and when i got the game the first thing i always do is go into the skill games to learn the shooting and to, and to go into the settings right i go into switching guess what's on by default guys the manual that's the one on by default so whenever you saw a loose ball from a streamer from a content creator and you're like 
why is nobody going to this ball? It's because this is the default option. When I, well, I don't know if it is by default for everybody, but when I opened the game, it was on manual. I'm like, okay, that makes more sense, right? So for me, I've always, ever since they switched this, like years and years ago, I've always preferred to have air balls and loose balls every single time. So that's what I have it on. Auto switching. I think for last year's game, I may have had it on low. It was low or none, right? So what this is, right? You can read it over here. Keeps the player you uh, who you have auto switch to move in the current direction for a period of time. This gives you time to orient your intended direction for the new player. The higher the assistance level, the longer the period of time the player will run. This is a really big thing for me too, because I think this was switched on something else as well. And I'm like, no, because it's that initial movement to the defender that I feel like I don't want the game to tell me how I should or shouldn't move. Because I noticed that I was defending in a way where I would kind of like flick my left stick to defend it. I'm like, this doesn't feel right. And then I would go here and I'm like, okay, this makes more sense. Um, right stick switching, I've always had it on classic. Um, obviously you can always do like different ones, adaptive player rotation. Uh, I'm okay with classic personally. Right stick switching, dependent on the person too. I've always preferred player relative um, over ball relative, right? Um, player relative just makes more sense to me. Like I, I would literally go on some people's accounts sometimes for like the reviews and they would have it on ball relative. And I'm like, this is, I can't do this. <laughs> uh, so the player who you control acts as a center point of reference for any right stick switching. Right stick sen sensitivity, this might be adjusted as the year goes by, depending on how responsive it feels in game. Uh, because again, there's not gonna be a right or wrong answer for this. For now, start off on a four, but if you notice that your right stick switching is really starting to irritate you, increase it or decrease it, depending on uh, what you feel like makes the most sense, right? So the higher the sensitivity, the more the game will respect your right stick directional input when selecting the next player. The lower the sensitivity, the more likely the game is to select a player in closer proximity, even if the right stick direction is not pointed directly at them. So it depends. When you're defending, do you prefer for the game to be super close or super far? It just depends on the situation, right? Next player switching. This one's very important as well, too. This is going to be completely de uh, dependent on what you guys want. I think some people might use closest to ball and then some people might use classic classic is basically the ai telling you like hey there is something going around this area right here maybe you want to block that out that's when you switch to your l1 and it switches to that general position right because if you already have your right stick switching to the right players i don't want my l1 to do the same thing right so my right stick is for the close my classic what is the ai basically choosing for me when it comes to the l1 switching right Player lock. This is a feature that I do not use at all, but it's very effective in this game. And if I played more consistently, I might actually uh, give that one a go for sure. But we'll see what the vibes are. Icon switching. I've always had that off. I never liked that feature. Turn that off right away. Contextual dribbling off by default. Orbit dribbling. Again, completely going to be down to the person. Orbit dribbling allows the player to move and pivot around the ball without touching it. So I'll do this. Hold L1, L2. Do you guys remember how in last year's game... I used to tell people, hey, guys, there is a thing in FIFA, especially when your gameplay feels a little bit weird, right, um, where you use the left stick in a way where you kind of act against the ball away, where you don't touch it, but you kind of fake it. So a lot of people notice this, uh, this mechanic where it's like if you're facing forward and then you would left stick a little bit, tiny bit backwards, your player wouldn't touch the ball right away. It takes that little bit of time to, to, to touch the ball. So what would happen is he would do somewhat of an animation, but then you could just left stick and go back on the inside, right? So with orbit dribbling, it's more of a selective thing. So very similar situation to the other thing that we were talking about, which was, I forget the feature already, but it was the other thing that you could, oh, the tackling, right? Where you can shoulder barge or you can tackle. So now this is another thing where it's a specific command that you can use. For me, I have it off because there's a feature that I'm going to show you guys that I like to use a lot. It's more specifically that L1 part and the shielding. I like to shield while making sure it, you know, holds on to the ball properly. But I also like to use the L1 because of the flicks, right? And we're going to be talking about that here in a bit. Okay, so we just switched to the kickoff because I'm going to show you guys the other settings that I use as well. So uh, save assistance for the goalkeeper is going to be on semi. Uh, analog sprint. 
Listen, this type of stuff I have on off. Obviously, the the more you hold it down, the faster you run. I don't want that, right? Some players actually prefer that. I would prefer a more consistency um, when it comes to that. So I have that off. Stuff like this trigger effect, user vibration, obviously personal preference as well. I think that when you're a competitive player or you're a serious player or just a normal guy, I think you should have it off, to be honest with you. It's the same thing with me when I play um, like shooter games as well, right? Like you don't want to have to deal with that kind of stuff right so um yeah a couple stuff there uh the camera options or the visual options is also very important to take a look at so i have it set to player name and indicator always i think this is way more important than looking at someone's gamer tag especially when you have the player on top of your head because sometimes you confuse players sometimes it's not always the guy that you think it is so when it's on your head it actually tells you what it is all the time right um so player indicator, uh, th okay, this part right here, play styles plus overhead indicators. Apparently, for some people, this part of the setting is actually making people's game lag sometimes. So if you're experiencing that, turn it off, okay? Because apparently there's a setting there that's making it be really weird. I might turn it off just for, just for the sake of it, to be honest with you. But for the player views, it would be really nice to have it on so that I can showcase the play style plus of the player especially with De Bruyne I could show you guys like the passes and stuff right uh next player switch indicator on that's the setting that I was talking to you guys about before where if when you press L1 you kind of want to see where it's switching to generally your right stick is gonna be the close one your L1 is gonna be the guys around um player base difficulty indicator off hold uh to skip I have that off so that I hope it's a toggle I, I just switched that on right now so I have to go see that afterwards time score display on this thing i've i've always hated this bro choose whether or not you want to drop down overlay to appear under the score clock during gameplay no thank you okay i have that off i i hope they don't show the visuals on the bottom left i haven't or the bottom left and right I, I haven't noticed it yet but that used to really really be irritating before uh precision shot visuals uh when uh, when the precision shot is active the setting will allow you to enable or disable the precision, uh, precision shot visuals uh, this is okay on but that'll be personal preference I always have this on 2D default. I never really changed that specifically. Uh, scrolling lineups. Choose whether you want the scrolling lineup to appear when skipping the match intro. Um, it's going to be completely up to you. You can have that on or off, right? It doesn't really matter. Uh, I, pu I put this on connection indicators only. Input overlay. I always have it on, guys. Okay, last year they kept resetting my settings. Okay, I didn't turn it off. They reset it, all right? Uh, high promotion inside overlays i keep on and i haven't really looked into that stuff too much um audio there's not really much for audio i have to turn that on because as a content creator you have to this stuff i don't really touch this stuff way too much yeah i don't really touch this at all uh you could adjust the contrast of brightness depending on your tv all that kind of stuff but that's up to you okay so the important one that i want to show you guys well they're all important but this is another one i want to show you okay so when you are in the game, you know, just start off a kickoff, whatever it is you want to start off. I want you to go to trainer, okay? Trainer, you can have on show, but show what you want to see, okay? So for me specifically, I like the directed runs indicator on, right? And I explained this in last year's game. Sometimes it would be turned off. Like I said, I'm not going to always do my settings every day. It was so annoying. But directed runs indicator on, 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 on. Uh, is going to show that little green arrow. So I need that green arrow to see if it activates because sometimes if you have it on off, you can't see it. You don't know if it's actually activated or not. Like you could obviously see it visually, but it's nice to see the actual green arrow to show exactly which type of run the player is going to end up doing. Uh, switch indicator, all of this stuff, I, I feel like you shouldn't have move an indicator. Maybe if you're like brand new to the game, this one you can definitely have on 100% if you really want to because this one is really helpful especially if you're going for like power strikes time finishing being on in this year's game could be a switch that people do um depending on how they feel because obviously with new players in this game uh they're not going to feel as responsive as last year's game because you're used to players that have like 99 dribbling stats 99 reactions all that kind of stuff so their animation to take a strike is quicker this year it's slower so you have to really feel it out if you want it to be off i don't like the indicator being on the top of my head it's actually more of a nuisance personally but again i could switch that in the future shot target honestly up to you if you want to keep that on or off i mean if you have your shot target on they're probably gonna do whatever anyways let's be honest 
uh, pass receiver indicator, like all that stuff I feel like is incredibly pointless. This one is the one that I feel like is the least pointless. This one and the time finisher indicator. So that will be completely personal preference based whether or not you want to have those two things on, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it for my settings, guys. Uh, I think it's very important that people go and go ahead and adjust them. The biggest one that really irritated me was the defending one and it was the switching the auto switching when it was a loose ball i'm like why are my players not approaching this like in the, i was talking about kickoff i don't even go to the i don't go into the online I'm, until i see certain things right i'm like okay i lose the ball I'll see if everything just feels okay and i'm like what's going on right so uh yeah turn on the trainer to see that specific thing for you for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about right this is the thing that i was mentioning before this is when you press l1 you tap it so like you use your left stick to aim towards the player that you want to do this mechanic with you tap the l1 and then you right stick flick down up left right wherever you want them to move right so entirely up to you if you want to do that stuff that's why i turned the orbit dribbling off because it works hand in hand with that specific mechanic and that really irritated me when i was trying it out right so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this video this will, this will be the video that people watch pretty much for the entire year I may switch one, two, three things maybe, but for the most part, that's what I'm going to be using for the entire year. So, and last but not least, guys, the camera settings. So this is the exact same thing that I was using last year, uh, co-op custom 13 for height, three for zoom. And then last but not least, the most important setting when it comes to the power shot is whether or not you want to have it on uh, on or off, right? Really up to you. Um, I like to have it off for a very specific reason. Uh, if we ever do the attacking tutorial, it's something that I figured out in this year's game that could be very, 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 very effective to work with. But once you get used to the fact that your player is doing the power shot, looking around you is still going to be important. So I don't really like the zoom in situation when I hit them, right? So um, I had it turned on for last year's game. Honestly, I didn't really use the power shot that much last year, but this year it's different because when you have that play style plus, they take very, very good strikes um, when it comes to having that, uh, that play style. So just food for thought, okay? But that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. I may switch like honestly maximum three or four things as the year progresses. But that's basically gonna gonna be what I'm gonna use for essentially the whole year. I think last year I switched two things maybe from the last settings, and they weren't like drastic changes, anyways. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. I'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.